Hello, welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man. We're uh, playing White Red Genesis Chamber once more, and this time we are playing against Scapeshift. So, uh, let's get this on underway. We won the roll, so obviously we're going to be on the play here. Sounds pretty nice. Uh, double Ranger, a uh, couple of Soul Sisters, and the Genesis Chamber. Pretty solid start. So, just going to ca crack this Mesa. And run out the Soul Warden. And he's the stomping ground into a search tomorrow, so immediately know he's on um, uh, escape shift. Sorry. Decide to run out the Genesis Chamber here. Make as many tokens as possible because we've got to be aggressive against escape shift. Uh, getting the life's also pretty nice. It means that he has to uh, pick up a few straight killers. Find a second Soul Warden, which is nice. Can be able to gain a lot of life here by just running out all our soul sisters and we're also going to be able to make quite a few tokens which means it can be aggressive so attack upon down to 15 here which for tomorrow comes uh, off suspend and hard cast to search we draw Norin which is really nice it's going to combine really well with our uh, soul sisters in the genesis chamber So we get to attack in with all our guys here. Let's attack five. Norin comes back down, gain three life. And then the Genesis Chamber token comes down, which gains us three more life. So it goes all the way up to 38 here. Caster, which gains us six more life. So we get into quite a uh, healthy life total here. Flashback search to it for tomorrow. So trying to get as many lands down as possible to make sure his escape shifts can be lethal. Meanwhile, Norin just uh, keeps pushing up our life total. Try to run out of Ranger. Unfortunately, our opponent has the remand for that. And I'm going to attack with my mere tokens. I don't want to attack with the Soul Sisters because I think getting three, uh, six life a turn is actually putting us in a probably what's keeping us alive here for the most part. So our opponent pulls the trigger on a small scape shift. To uh, just kill off our creatures with his Valka activations, which uh, seems pretty good for us. We're on 54, so I'm not sure how he's going to kill us. Poss probably doesn't have enough mountains in his deck just to uh, Straight killers now. Use them up. Just potentially you still could, but so we Ranger, which is gonna be able to find us some more soul sisters. We also drew a soul's attendant. So next turn we're gonna to get to drop those. Falca actually killed Norin, which <laughs> is a sad sight to see. I kinda of forgot that he could actually kill Norin with the uh, Valakut, that is one way that you can uh, kill a Norin. Punt drops a Sakura Tribe Elder, which is fine. It's going to attack him with our tokens. Takes one and uh, trades off his guys. We have a second Genesis Chamber, and we're just going to run out our Soul Sisters with the Genesis Chamber. Just gaining way more life and making a load of tokens. Punt's only on four now, so we seem like in a pretty good position. And uh, even if he has a sweeper, we can restock with Ranger. So, uh, yeah, that worked out pretty well. We actually managed to win. Uh, I thought this was a really unfavorable game for us. But, yeah, the ridiculous number of Soul Sisters managed to actually uh, bump our life total really high and uh, make it very difficult for our opponent to win. So, that went a lot better than expected. Let's move on to game two. Oh. Mulligan happened there. I think the initial hand was fairly unexciting. This is also pretty unexciting, but um, we have the one drop. We have the Genesis Chamber, and I suppose hopefully we'll draw something nice. Current Soul's attendance pretty good there. Current just drops some jewels. I'm going to attack the Genesis Chamber. 
I've got some breeding pool. I'm gonna play my suture priest. Just again, there's a bit of life here. And then the light Legion Loyalist. Get some more life. Make another token. I'm getting sacking for two here. Which I put drops Mountain uh, Anger of the Gods, which is uh, pretty bad for us. I'm gonna play out Perforous though. Um, do need to draw some creatures though. But I don't know if we could really afford to uh, play around Anger. So we have the second Genesis Chamber and the Dajani's Pride Mate to play, which is gonna be able to six our opponent with the Perforous. It's pretty good. Obviously this obstinate battle give him four life so uh, some of that was negated but the turns keep coming and uh, we actually uh, draw a few more creatures we can uh, definitely pressure our opponent's life total here one explores and unfortunately he actually is he's got eight lands here so he's going to be able to kill me so he's got he's grabbing two Valakuts and six lands, so that's is that 18 damage? Is that more than that? No, 36 damage, isn't it? Six, six sixes. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve activation. Oh. <coughs> I'm getting a bit confused. <laughs> Don't like Valakut math. So he gets, yeah, 12 activations of uh, Valakut, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, 6 lands, 2 Valakuts, 12 activations, and uh, that'll be enough to finish us off. So, fortunately we don't win a game 2, and he managed to uh, beat us up. Despite our uh, increased life total, he's uh, just been able to play enough lands and... Uh, get the win. Which is kinda of how I expect this game to go generally. So let's go on to game three, see if we can draw it back. Uh, this is quite a nice hand. Got Soul Warden, Legion Loyalist, Ranger and the Genesis Chamber. Lead off with a Soul Warden, pump plays a Valakut. Gonna go to attack for one and I'm just gonna drop the Genesis Chamber here. Explores into a steam vents. Drop Blood Moon, which is probably the only good hate card we have in the sideboard. This matchup uh, turns off their Valakuts. Obviously, they can search up lots of lands, so it's not the best against them, but the main thing is that it turns off Valakut. Um, imagine he's going to be able to, he's going to be looking to cryptic bounce my Blood Moon when he wants to go off. But obviously, he's got to find a lot of islands in the meantime to actually be able to do that. And who knows how many basic islands he's running, so we'll see what happens on that front. But uh get to attack for one here. And search for tomorrow, finding the island. So yeah, as you can see he's trying to set up cryptic mana as an out to our blood moon. Attack for two, putting the home down to sixteen. And use a snapcaster. Allows him to search for tomorrow. See me finding another island. So yeah, he's got the trio of islands for cryptic now. I'm gonna find a ranger. Norin. Actually, if I'd been more aware at the time of him actually going for cryptic mana, I might have got a second soul warden here and just tried to boost our life total as much as possible. But I like Norin in that actually. Uh, going to be able to increase the number of creatures we're making. So with all my guys here, uh, due to Legion Lion, um, I'm kind of, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't have attacked with the Soul Warden, because he could have double blocked, and probably should have double blocked, all things considered, but managed to get away with that one. And uh, gain two life at the end of the turn with uh, Noran coming back in and making it token. 
the tax which exiles on Orin, which is nice for us. Um, oh, but then he has the anger, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah, that's not too good for us. But fortunately, we still got Norin, which means that uh, things aren't too bad. And actually, not getting double soul wars in there seems kind of good now. Norin is uh, certainly much more valuable post anger. So, still got a nice little combination of cards going here. I don't know if our opponent's got the cryptic yet. Just keep attacking. Imagine he's probably just drawing as many cards as he possibly can and playing as many lands as he can until we actually put him into a deadly position. Go for the third Genesis Chamber, which is the power of Soul Warden, which uh, makes a lot of sense as getting three life a turn is not good for him. Also, our army's pretty much mounting up. Opponent Cryptics um, bouncing the blood, uh, blood Moon. Obviously, knows he's dead next turn, so he's got to go for it. He then casts Visit Charm, so it appears he didn't have the Scape Shift and uh, didn't find it. So, uh, yeah, we managed to win this one. Um, surprise win of Escape Shift. I think this match up is really awful generally, but uh, yeah. Obviously there are ways to win and these were the ways. Um, generally I would not expect to beat this matchup. It seems really, really awful. But uh, yes, definitely actually winnable. So there's some news for you.